What a terrific exhibition the Chinese Entombed Warriors was. Makes my exhibition look a bit rubbishy. Especially these things, because I think a couple of them might be fakes. Let's take them off and have a closer look. One, two, and the third one, which has problems of another kind. Well, deciding on whether things are fakes or not can be pretty tricky. But there's a good technique that's often used, and that's to hit them with ultraviolet light. Let's take uh, my marvellous 1705 portrait of General Wolfe. It's a magnificent drawing. I'm very proud of this one. And hold it up. You can see it's very clean paper, beautifully drawn, but let's see what happens under ultraviolet light. Here is the little lamp. I drop the ordinary lights and put on the ultraviolet. And suddenly it glows. What's this? A message? It says, if I'm not mistaken, eat at Tony's Cafe. What on earth is that doing in a 1705 drawing? Well, of course it's not. It's a distinctly 20th century message, which means that General Wolfe must have been drawn on top of it, and the whole thing must be a fake. Bang goes my million dollar investment. Oh, well, never mind, I've got others. Particularly this one. And of course, ultraviolet doesn't just disclose fakes. It can disclose things which are very interesting. A lot of more modern painters couldn't afford to buy their own canvases. So what they did was to buy up old paintings and paint on top of what was already there. And this is just such a painting. It's become very famous now. It's worth a million dollars in its own right. But if I uh, put it down there and give it ultraviolet light, again, we have to make the room dark to see this, hit it with the ultraviolet, and what comes up? The long-lost drawing of General Wolfe, hiding underneath the top layer of paint. Again, if I lift the lights in the studio, the first picture vanishes. But it's there, hiding under the top layer. So there's a problem for me to wrestle with. Do I keep my million-dollar modern painting, or scrape it off and get the million-dollar drawing of General Wolfe? Well, I'll worry about that later, because I want to show you some more things about it, these uh, ultraviolet rays. What they can do to certain rocks and minerals. Here we are, a couple of fairly boring-looking rocks, but under ultraviolet, let's see what happens to that black crust where my finger is. You see, it comes up glowing green. And only some minerals do that. Not all of them green, but only some of them glow under ultraviolet. And that helps us to identify what we find in the rocks and minerals around us. And banks use ultraviolet too. They can have stains like that. And if I put that under the light, you can see that that uh, sloshing liquid is glowing green. And if you want to mark money, you can take money that normally doesn't glow at all, drop it into the stain, and there it is, glowing under ultraviolet. It won't show up under ordinary light, at least once the stain is dry. So you can mark money like that and track it down by exposing it to ultra ultraviolet and uh, catch your burglars that way. Well, what is this stuff? We can't see it, but it makes things glow so that we can see them when they glow. It's related to the light that we can see. And these are the colours that are in white light. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet. Down below red there, outside red, we've got infrared. And we pick that up as heat. You may have had infrared heat on a torn muscle. On the other side of violet is the ultraviolet. We can't see it, but it's lurking there and it makes these things fluoresce because it's got energy. It's a, f it's a wavelength that, as we've seen, makes things glow. And so that's what it does, and it's a very useful technique for tracking things down that we can't see with the naked eye. Well, here's a problem of another kind with my art gallery, because one of the artists has sent me this thing, and he's decided he wants to change it. He wants to reframe it. Not in an oblong frame, but in a square one. And it's a checkerboard pattern lying on its side. The border is nine half squares there, and four half squares there. I've got to cut it, but I've got to do the least amount of cutting, so that I can rearrange that pattern to fit into the square. And I'm really not too sure how I'm going to begin. Back to my framing problem. You remember we had this draft board pattern on the side, and we had to cut that painting to fit it into a square frame instead of the rectangular one it's in now. And I think I've solved how to do it. First of all, let's practice on a copy of the painting so we don't ruin the original. We remember it was diagonal and it had on the border of half squares four there and nine there. Well this is what we do. Turn it around and measure three up here and cut in two full squares like that. Turn around and do exactly the same thing. Measure three up there and cut in exactly two squares. Then all I do is to join the ends of those cuts together. 
very carefully running down through the points of the squares. And if I put it on the deck, you can see that that, as the original painting, fitted that original frame. So I whisk that off, push them like that, and rearrange them there, we have one solution to the problem. It's not the only one. So make yourself a copy of that and have a go at home.